Welcome into the Cube's presentation of AWS Startup Showcase Open Cloud Innovations. This is season two, episode one of the ongoing series covering exciting hot startups from the AWS ecosystem. Today's episode one of season two theme is open source community and the open cloud innovations. I'm your host, John Furrier of theCUBE. And today we're excited to be joined by Loris DeGioani, who is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer and founder of Sysdig, founded in his backyard with some wine and beer. Great to see you. We're here to talk about Falco, finding cloud threats in real time. Thank you for joining us, Loris. Thank you, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, love that your company was founded in your backyard. Classic startup story. You've been growing very, very fast. Uh, and the key point of this showcase is to talk about the startups that are making a difference and, and that are winning and doing well. You guys have done extremely well with your business. Congratulations. But the, the big theme in, is, is security. And, and as organizations have moved their business critical applications to the cloud, the attackers have followed. This is really important in the industry. You guys are in the middle of this. What's your view on this? What's your take? What's your reaction? Yeah, um, as we, uh, as a, a, an ecosystem are moving to the cloud, as more and more we are developing cloud native applications, we are relying on CI CD, we are relying on uh, orchestrations and containers. Uh, security is becoming more and more important, and I would say more and more complex. Uh, I mean, we're reading in, every day in the news uh, about uh, attacks, about data leaks uh, and so on. There's rarely a day when there's nothing major happening and that we can see in the press from this point of view. And uh, definitely uh, things are evolving, things are changing in the cloud. For example, since they just released a, a cloud native security uh, and usage report a uh, few days ago. And among the things that we found among uh, our user bases, for example, 66% 60, of containers are running as root. So still many organizations uh, are adopting a relatively re relaxed way to deploy their applications, not because they like doing that, but because it tends to be, you know, easier and a little bit uh, with a little bit less friction. We also found that 27% uh, of users have uh, unnecessary uh, root access, and the 73% of the cloud accounts have public S3 buckets. This is all stuff that uh, is all good, but uh, can generate consequences when you make a mistake like uh, typically you know your data leaks not because of super sophisticated attacks but because somebody in your organization forgets maybe some data on a, on, on a public s3 bucket or because uh, some credentials uh, that are not restrictive enough maybe are leaked to another team member or or, or, or on a github uh, you know repository or something like that so is infrastructures and this software becomes, uh, let's say, more sophisticated and more automated, there, there's also at the same time, uh, more risks and opportunities for misconfigurations that then tend to be, you know, very often the source of, of issues in the cloud. Yeah, those self-inflicted wounds definitely have come up. We've seen people leaving S3 buckets open, you know, it's user error, but you know, we're, we're, those, are, are, are small little things that get taken care of pretty quickly. That's just hygiene, that's just discipline. You know, most of the sophisticated enterprises are moving way past that, but now they're adopting more cloud native, right? And as they get into the critical apps, securing them has been challenging. We've talked to many CIOs and CISOs and they say that to us. Yep, it's very challenging, but we're on it. I have to ask you, what should people worry about when securing the cloud? Because they know it's challenging, they know the opportunity on the other side. What are they worried about? What do you see people um, scared of or addressing or what should I be worried about when securing the cloud? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes when uh, talking about uh, uh, security, I like to compare you know, uh, the old data center and uh, the old monolithic applications to a castle, you know, a middle-aged castle. So what, what did you do to protect your castle? You used to, uh, build very thick walls around it, and then a small entrance, and be very careful about that entrance, you know, protect that entrance very well. So what we used to do in the data center was uh, 
protect everything, you know, the, the whole perimeter in a very aggressive way with firewalls, uh, making sure that there was only a very narrow entrance to our data center and uh, have, uh, you know, as much as possible, like active security there, like firewalls, all this kind of stuff. Now we're in the cloud. Now it's everything, everything is much more diffuse, right? Our users, our customers are coming from all over the planet every country, every geography, every time zone. But also our internal team is coming from everywhere because we're, we're, they're all accessing a cloud environment, you know, very often from home, uh, from different offices, again, from every different geography, every different country. So uh, in this configuration, uh, the metaphor that I, that I like to use is an amusement park, right? You have uh, a big area with many important things inside and uh, users and operators that are coming from different entrances that you cannot really block, you know? You need to let every, everything come in and, 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 and operate together. In this kind of environment, uh, the traditional protection is not really effective. It's uh, uh, overwhelming and it doesn't really serve the purpose that we need. We cannot build a giant wall around the, our amusement park. We need people to, to come in. So what we're finding is uh, uh, understanding uh, getting visibility uh, and doing it in real time uh, is much more important. So it's more like we need to replace the big walls with uh, a granular network of security cameras that allow us to see what's happening in the, in the different areas of our amusement park. And we need to be able to do that in a way that uh, uh, is in real time and allows us to react in a smart way as things happen because in the modern world of cloud, five minutes of delay in understanding that something is wrong mean that you're already being, you know, attacked and your data is already being exfiltrated. Well, I love the analogy of the amusement park. And of course, certain rides, you need to be a certain height to ride the roller coaster. I guess that's IT credentials or security uh, credentials, yep. as we say. Um, but in all seriousness, the perimeter is dead. We all know that. Um, also, moats were relied upon as well in the old days. You know, you secure the firewall, nothing comes in, goes out, and then once you're in, you don't know what's going on. Now that's flipped. There's no walls, there's no moats, everyone's in. And so you're saying this kind of security camera kind of model is key. So again, this topic here is securing real time. Yeah. How do you do yeah. that? Because um, it's happening so fast, it's moving. There's a lot of movement. It's not at rest. There's data moving around fast. What's the secret sauce to making real, identifying real time threats in an enterprise? Yeah, and uh, in, in our opinion, uh, there are some key ingredients. One is uh, granularity, right? Uh, you cannot uh, really understand the threats in your amusement park if you're just watching uh, this from, from a satellite picture. So you need to be there you need to be granular, you need to be located in the, in the areas where stuff happens. This means, for example, in, uh, in security for the cloud and in runtime security, it's important to have uh, your sensors that are distributed, that are able to observe every single endpoint. Not only that, but you also need to look at the infrastructure, right? From this point of view, uh, uh, cloud providers like Amazon, for example, offer uh, nice uh, facilities. Like for example, there's, CloudTrail uh, in uh, AWS that collects in a nice, opinionated, consistent way, the data that is coming from multiple uh, cloud services. So it's important from one point of view to go deep into, into the endpoint, into the processes, into what's ex executing, but also collect this information, like the CloudTrail information and being able to correlate it to. There's no full security without covering all of the bases. So uh, security is a matter of both granularity and being able to go deep and understanding what every single item does, but also being able to uh, go broad and collect the right, the right data sources and correlate it. And then the real time is really critical. So uh, decisions need to be taken as the data comes in. So the streaming nature uh, of uh, security engines uh, is becoming more and more important. So uh, the step one of cloud security, especially cloud security post posture management was uh, very much 
Let's poll once in a while. Let's let's invoke the APIs and see what's happening. This is still important, of course. You know, you need to have the basis covered. But more and more, the paradigm needs to change to okay, the data is coming, and second by second, instead of asking for the data manually once in a while, second by second, this, uh, the moment it arrives, you need to be able to detect, correlate, take decisions. And so, you know, machine learning is very important. Automation is very important. The rules that are coming from the community on a, on a daily basis are, are, are very important. Let me ask you a question, because I love this topic, because it's a data problem at the same time, there's some network action going on. I love this idea of no perimeter, you're going to be monitoring everything, but there's been trade-offs in the past, overhead involved, whether you're monitoring or putting probes in the network or different, there's all kinds of different approaches. How does the new technology with cloud and machine learning change the dynamics of the kinds of approaches? Because it's kind of not old tech, but it's the you know, same similar concepts to network management and other things. What, what's going on now that's different and what makes this possible today? Yeah, I think from the friction point of view, uh, which is uh, uh, one, a uh, very important topic here. So uh, this needs to be deployed efficiently and easily uh, and as transparent, transparent as possible everywhere, everywhere to uh, avoid blind spots and uh, uh, making sure that everything is captured. And from this point of view, it's very important to uh, integrate with uh, orchestration. It's very important uh, to uh, make use of uh, all of the facilities that uh, Amazon uh, provides. Uh, and uh, it's uh, very important to have uh, a system that uh, um, is deployed automatically and not manually. That is uh, in particular, the only way to avoid blind spots because if manual deployment is employed, uh, somebody will forget you know, to deploy it where, where, somewhere where it's important. And then from the performance point of view, uh, very much, for example, with Falco, you know, uh, our open source runtime security engine, uh, we really took uh, key uh, design decisions at the beginning to make sure that uh, uh, the engine would be able to support and parse millions of events per second with minimal overhead, you know, the barely measure, measurable overhead. When you want to design something like that, you know that you need to uh, accept some kind of trade-offs. You need to know that you need to maybe limit a little bit the expressiveness, you know, of what can be done. But uh, uh, ease of deployment and performance were more important goals here. And, you know, it's not uncommon for SysDeep to have uh, users of Falco or commercial customers that have uh, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of machines, you know, EC2 machines, and sometimes millions of containers. And in these environments, uh, lightweight is key. Uh, you want depth, but uh, you want overhead to be really minimal. And, okay, and so, in open, so uh, amusement park, a lot of diverse applications. So integration, I get that. Orchestration brings back the Kubernetes angle a little bit and Falco. Yeah. Um, and per overhead and performance, cloud scale. So all these things are working in favor, if I get that right. Is that, am I getting that right? You get the cloud scale, you get the integration and open source. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and it's like uh, uh, ingredients of a recipe, you know? And, uh, and with these ingredients, it's possible to bake uh, a, a a, a recipe to, 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 have, to have a plate that uh, uh, can be uh, more usable, more effective and more efficient than maybe the plates that we we're doing in the previous generation. Okay, so I got to ask you about Falco because this come up a lot. We talked about it on our CUBE conversations already on the internet, check that out and great conversation there. You guys have close to 40 million plus down, million downloads of, of this. You have also AWS Fargate integration. So, yeah. so some significant traction. Um, yeah. What does this mean? I mean, what is it telling us? Why is this successful? Um, what are people doing with Falco? Yeah. Uh, I see this as a leading indicator and I know you guys were sponsoring the project, so congratulations and propelled your business, but there's something going on here. What is this as a leading indicator of? Yeah, and for, for the audience, Falco is uh, the uh, runtime security tool of uh, the cloud native generation, essentially. So when building Falco, we were inspired 
by previous generation, for example, network intrusion detection system tools and uh, uh, host protection tools and so on. But we created essentially a unique tool that would really be designed for the modern paradigm of containers, cloud, CICD, and so on. And Falco essentially uh, is able to collect a bunch of granular information from your applications that are running in the cloud. And as a rule engine that is uh, based on policies that are driven by the community essentially, that allow you to detect uh, misconfigurations, attacks, anomalous conditions in your cloud uh, in, in your cloud applications. Recently, we announced uh, the extension of Falco to support uh, cloud infrastructure runtime security by parsing uh, cloud logs like CloudTrail and so on. So now Falco can be used at the same time to protect the workloads that are running in virtual machines or containers and also the cloud infrastructure. To give the audience a couple of examples, Falco is able to detect if somebody is uh, uh, running a shell in a Redis container, or if somebody is downloading a sensitive file from an S3 bucket, all of these in real time. Uh, with Falco, uh, we decided to go really, we started it at SysDig, I was one of the team members that started it, but we decided to go to the community right away because this is one other ingredient. We were talking about ingredients before and there's not a successful modern security tool without being able to leverage the community and empower the community to contribute to it, to use it, to validate it and so on. And that's also why we contributed Falco to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation so that Falco is a CNCF tool and is blessed uh, by many organizations. We are also partnering with many companies, in, in, including Amazon. Uh, last year, we released the um, Fargate support for Falco, and that was done as a project that was done in cooperation with Amazon so that we could have strong runtime security for the containers that are running in Fargate. Well, I got to say, first of all, congratulations. And I think that's a bold move to donate or not donate, contribute to the open source community because you're enabling a lot of people to do great things. And some people might be scared. They think they might be foreclosing a benefit in the future. Uh, but in reality, that is the new business model of open source. Um, so I think that's worth, worth calling out and congratulations. This is the new commercial open source paradigm. Uh, and it kind of leads into my last question, which is, why is security well positioned to benefit from open source besides the fact that the new model of getting people enabled and getting scale and getting standards like you're doing makes everybody win. And again, that's a community model. That's not a proprietary approach. So again, open source, again, big part of this. Why yeah. will security benefit from open source? I, I'm a strong believer. I mean, uh, we are in a battle. We could say we are in a war, right? The good guys versus the bad guys. <laughs> uh, the, the, the internet uh, is full of, of bad guys. And uh, these bad guys are coordinated, are motivated, are sometimes well-funded and well-equipped. We win only if we fight this war as a community. So the old paradigm of uh, vendors building their own uh, ivory towers, you know, and their own uh, self-contained ecosystems. And uh, the, us as users, uh, as, as, as customers, having many different, you know, environments that don't communicate with each other, just doesn't take advantage of uh, our capabilities, our strength. As, as a community. So we are much stronger against the big guys and we have a much better chance to win, win this war if we adopt a, 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 a paradigm that allows us to work together. Think only about, for example, I don't know, uh, companies having to train, you know, their workforce on the security best practices, on the security tools. It's much better to standardize on something, build a stack that is accepted by everybody and talent can focus on learning the stack and becoming a master at the stack rather, rather than every single organization having a, di a different tool. And, and then be, it's very hard to attract talent and to have the right you know, people that can help you with, uh, with your issues uh, and, 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 and with your goals. So um, uh, the future of security is going to be open source. I'm a strong believer uh, in that. And we we'll see more and more examples like Falco of initiatives that really start with the, with the community and for the community. 
Like we always say in open, open wins always. Turn the lights on, put the code out there. And I think, I think the community model is winning. Congratulations, uh, Loris Day, Joani, CTO and founder of Sysdig. Congratulations for your success. And thank you for coming on theCUBE for the AWS Startup Showcase, Open Cloud Innovations. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Okay, it's theCUBE. Stay with us all day long, every day with theCUBE. Check us out, thecube.net. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Thank you.